Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review video. I've been kind of on a roll with MP3 players recently, so let's review another one. This guy was very kindly sent in by a company called Pexu, a name that I can actually pronounce for once. Uh, and this guy is a 32 uh, gigabyte MP3 player. It's basically an Android phone minus the phone. And I reviewed a very similar model. Um, I forget the name of it. I'll put a, a text strip here or something if I can find it. But yeah, um, I was sent one very similar to that, uh, to this model. And this one is sort of like an upgrade over that uh, because that other one, you were much more constricted. You could not uh, install your own apps. I was uh, told by the manufacturer that this one is, you know, you can install any APK that you want. You're good to go. Uh, you can run whatever games or whatever on it that it's capable of running. Uh, as long as you can install it, you're good to go. So I wanted to try out some kind of streaming audio apps and like Pandora and that kind of stuff. I want to see if this is capable of running that. Anyway, this is a slightly larger model at five inches. And uh, let's just see if it says anything. Really hard to read this text, geez. <laughs> so yeah, this is, it has a, a 2,500 milliamp hour battery. So fairly larger comparatively to the stuff I've been reviewing recently. Five inch IPS LCD, so it's considerably larger. And it's saying interesting, Wi-Fi dual band uh, so 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. We'll have to test speeds on that. It's got Bluetooth 5. It says uh, 32 gig. That's going to be the flash. And 3 gigs of RAM. That is impressive for an MP3 player. That's starting to get up into kind of low-end phone territory by this point. It does have a micro SD card slot. It supports up to 1 terabyte. So awesome. Uh, it says it has a built-in FM radio. Supports like every format under the sun because it's Android. And video formats, too, if you want to watch videos on it. Uh, yeah, uh, this model is apparently the P5S. And yeah, nice box. Nice presentation. No finger holes, so a little bit annoying to get into. But yeah, here we have the unit itself presented uh, front and center. This is a pretty beefy boy. Yeah, it's about the size of a smartphone, so definitely not small. Uh, but this should be quite a bit more capable than um, than some of the lower end kind of Android MP3 player models. So anyway, we'll take a look at this in a sec. What else do you get in the box? So you have, of course, your obligatory foam padding. You have everything else under here. Uh, let's see. So we are given a, looks like a set of replacement screen protectors. If I can open it. There we go. So yeah. Uh, looks like, yeah, one replacement screen protector. Looks like one's already on the unit itself. So that's really nice. I like seeing them include something like this because this will eventually get scratched and you already have a replacement. So that's good. We have these little USB adapters and I like I like that they include these so that you can actually plug your phone directly into this and send music from your phone directly to the unit. You don't need a computer, but of course you can use a computer if you'd like. This is a micro uh, USB and this is a type C. So depending on what your phone has and they just have a full size connector on the other end. So yeah, these are nice things to have. These are useful in general. Uh, if you have, you know, even laptops are starting to have Type-C ports on them. My laptop only has Type-C ports, so having these adapters is really useful for me. I, I actually carry a couple of them in my backpack uh, just so I can plug in full-size USB cords. <laughs> so, yeah, that's real cool. We have the USB cable here. And this guy is a Type-C, so I'm happy to see that the unit itself charges over Type-C. So no more micro USB shenanigans. The cord itself is about a foot long, so long enough. And yeah, that'll do the job. And we have the horrible earbuds that like every MP3 player comes with nowadays. Uh, they're like... Uh, Cheap little maracas. Yeah, 
I'm not going to be using these. Uh, these are the ones with the weird L and R on the sides. Huh. I've seen these before. Uh, yeah, I'm not even going to listen to these. These are going to inevitably sound like trash. I'm, I probably will just snip the cord off and use the cord itself uh, to repair other things. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you're going to get a player like this, get a decent pair of headphones. I forgot if I'd mentioned already, but yeah, this player retails for about 80 bucks. Um, it's on the listing as of the making of this video, whether or not there's a discount or not. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head right now, but yeah, for 80 bucks, uh, they could have, I, I, I wouldn't have faulted them for not including headphones. Everyone has headphones nowadays, significantly better than these cheap pairs. So I, I would have preferred they just saved the money on these and like gave us, I don't know, another screen protector instead or something like that. Anyway, we have a little manual. So apparently, yeah, there are two models, I guess, a P5 and the P5S. So what is the difference between the two? I'm wondering if maybe the S has like more RAM or something like that, or maybe a slightly better processor. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you can see here. Troubleshooting uh, specifications, if you want to take a screenshot of that. Uh, the screen resolution is 480 by 854, so WVGA, uh, not great. They call it an HD 5-inch IPS. Uh, WVGA is not HD. Uh, IPS, hopefully it is an IPS that should make a difference. Uh, much, it'll be much you know, better looking than something like an FSTN or like an older tech LCD. But yeah, it's not going to be high resolution, but... Like I said, you're just, you should really use this to listen to music. I wouldn't, you know, subject myself to watching videos on a little five inch uh, WVGA screen. <laughs> I'm not that much of a masochist. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much information I've already read off, etc., etc. Yeah, let's just uh, pop this open. So we have the unit itself, glass back. To be fair, it already has fingerprints on it. <laughs> so yeah, fingerprint magnet, unfortunately. But I mean, it feels really nice. Glass, uh, all, the sides are all metal. And they're not like super sharp. There is a little bit of like a, of a chamfer around them. So that's nice. Feels really good in the hand. And it's just, it's it's this is a beefy boy. I kind of like it, actually. I, I know we've spent our entire lives going towards devices that are getting thinner and lighter, and we've already reached the tipping point. I, I, I find myself actually preferring kind of slightly larger, beefier, hardier devices. So this is taking some boxes for me. We have what appears to be, I guess, speakers on the bottom, or maybe one speaker and one mic. Two headphone jacks. Wow. I didn't realize I had two headphone jacks. That's kind of cool. So bring a friend along. <laughs> we have a USB-C connector that's a little bit recessed. Micro SD card slot here. Nothing on the top. Vine buttons, power button. And that's it. So I guess the obligatory uh, ASMR screen peeling is uh, about to be. Uh, give me one sec, though, on that. So before we, we peel it, says it has an octa-core processor, an MTK processor. That is interesting. So this guy actually might be more powerful than I was thinking. Uh, d d yeah, everything else. Yeah, dual 3.5 mil jack, etc., etc. So yeah, let's uh, just peel this off. So ready your ears. That was satisfying. So yeah, we have a pristine screen. Let's just see how long that lasts before my grubby little fingers. Yeah, it does have a screen protector on it already. That's a really nice touch. Let's see if it has power. This was actually sitting on my doorstep. They delivered it and I didn't know. I like that font. I really like that font. <laughs> it's like old 8-bit graphics. But yeah, this was sitting on my doorstep. They Amazon delivered it and I didn't get a notification. I didn't know and... Yeah, my dad told me, hey, uh, someone was at the door earlier, and I checked, and it was sitting here. <laughs> so, yeah, that booted up reasonably quick for the first time. 
Touchscreen is reasonably responsive. I don't have swipe up to app drawer, but I guess, uh, okay, that's how you hide that. Okay, so you can hide the uh, virtual buttons on, along the bottom. Let's see what version of Android this is. Um, the screen color temperature seems to be, it's looking weird on the camera. So it looks green on the camera. In real life, it looks sort of more whitish slash yellowish off-white. So it does not look, I don't know why the camera is showing this as like a putrid green. It definitely is not. It's definitely more white than that. <laughs> Let's just get into the uh, the menu there. Yeah, what is up with my camera? It, this is making it look like it's like yellow or something. Most definitely is not. Let me see if turning on the lights will help. Okay, yeah. For some reason, the color correction on my camera was uh, wreaking havoc. It still looks a little yellow on this screen for some reason. But uh, it's definitely kind of, now that I'm looking at it, a little bit of a bluer white in real life. But yeah. So I'm noticing there's this weird button that's like always in the way. What What is that? <laughs> uh, okay, that's like a quick button, I guess. That's interesting. And I can move it around. Huh, that's weird. But yeah, if I go into about device, oops, nope, about device. It says it's a PS, <laughs> PS5, it's P5S, that's going to get me. Yeah, as uh, the processor is uh, MTK6753 Octa-Core, I had to look up the specs on that. It's running Android 8.1, so actually fairly, fairly recent, I would say. And you got the build number here is, uh, uh, what is this, uh, July 2022, so actually fairly recent. Uh, we're like halfway through July right now, so it was like maybe like a week or two ago, looks like. Uh, so yeah. And uh, we can go into storage here and see, yeah, uh, the operating system takes up about seven, a little less than seven and a half gigs of the 32 gigs, but we have that micro SD card slot, so that'll make up really nicely for that. And uh, yeah, I can just go through here. Brightness is maybe a little bit, yeah, a little bit dim, I would say. Perfectly usable on its low setting, though, but even at its brightest setting, this is not super bright. I, I, so I've been spoiled by, like, modern AMOLED uh, displays on smartphones. So going back to this, I, I mean, the viewing angles on here are actually okay. Color shifts a little bit when going from this side to the top. Uh, on the viewing it from the bottom actually makes it look more white for some reason look actually decent but there is some color shifting going on so maybe it's not quite of a high quality you know a high enough quality of ips or something i don't know but yeah uh just the brightness is just not as bright as i'm used to i guess yeah it came charged 94 percent so we have already plenty of apps installed here. Do we have Google Play though? I don't believe so because on the setup, it, you would expect it to ask for your um, your like Google login if that were the case. There is no app drawer. <laughs> I guess there isn't. It's just whatever you install is on the home screen. Give me a sec. I'm going to use this. going to put a bunch of music on it and whatnot and uh, get it set up so I can properly demo it to you guys. So... For you guys, it'll be about a second. For me, it'll be probably closer to about two weeks. So I'll see you guys. Okay, so just a quick thing. I just plugged in like a thumb drive into the bottom using uh, the USB-C, the full-size USB adapter. This device does not, or at least it isn't enabled, uh, have USB on the go. So you can't plug in a thumb drive directly and have this act as a host and read the thumb drive. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get that working. Maybe it's just disabled by default. But uh, I did plug in a micro SD card with some APKs on it, and I'm installing Double Twist right now. And it looks like I will be able to actually install it. So at least I can un install it directly from an SD card. So that's definitely a good sign. And it didn't give me any errors or take me to settings where there wasn't a setting I can click to enable it. So it looks like just by default it will install um, unknown apps. So... Awesome. So we'll just click done here and I'll go back and yeah, there is no app drawer. It just adds it to the home screen. So I can, uh, can confirm it. 
and I have double twist now. <laughs> so already this is turning out to be awesome. I love that you can install your own APKs on here and it seems to be actually pretty fast too. So yeah, uh, let's get on with the test then. Okay, so I use this guy for about a month now. I've been taking this to work and listening not just to music, but also audiobooks uh, over extended periods of time, namely over Bluetooth. And so things that I found during use, uh, so battery testing I've done, I haven't done with wired headphones. I did it with Bluetooth though. Uh, for every 20% of battery, I was able to get around plus or minus three hours of playtime. So theoretically, that means the battery should last about 15 hours if I did a full discharge, if I use Bluetooth. And these were with um, Bluetooth earbuds, like true wireless earbuds I tested with. It shouldn't matter what the Bluetooth device used to test it with. Uh, the battery drain should be roughly the same as far as I, I can understand. So if you can extrapolate that, so uh, Bluetooth is less energy efficient than just using wired headphones. So I, I would expect that this should easily be able to reach 20 hours to 25 hours using wired headphones, uh, driving like relatively normal headphones. So not like high, uh, not like super low impedance, high powered headphones, uh, just using a standard like 32 ohm ish pair of headphones it should be able to run like upwards of 20 hours which is respectable now this isn't a very small player and it's significantly larger than uh, the last android player model that i reviewed which that size was actually it was interesting i, I like that size a little better in terms of the pocketability this is pretty much the size of a like a modern smartphone it's maybe a little bit wider and a little bit shorter than what you would expect from like a flagship smartphone. So this will pretty much consume one whole pocket-ish, depending on how big your pockets are. So in terms of uh, audio quality, absolutely no issues. So I actually have a uh, double twist. Uh, yeah, there you go. I actually have double twist installed here, which is actually another huge thing. Uh, this player you can install your own apk files there are some caveats which we'll go through in a second but yeah you can see here i have double twist installed and i can eq to my heart's content <laughs> and it sounds fantastic absolutely no issues with the audio quality battery life like i said is pretty decent could be better but also i've seen far worse uh in in products you know uh, within kind of this price range speaking of which the price range for this i believe it was around 80 bucks, maybe just a little bit less than 80 bucks. So this is starting to get up into smartphone, like used smartphone or low end smartphone territory. So it depends what you really want. This is kind of ideal uh, for if you want to get your kids some like a, a media device, but you don't necessarily want them to have like LTE wireless. You don't have to, to pay like a cell phone bill and you don't want them uh, just being able to do anything you kind of want to lock them down maybe to just maybe watching some videos that are saved onto the device as well as music that's saved and that's the thing so i said you could install apks uh there is no google play and there's no google google services which means while you can install the youtube app it'll open and then black screen and then quit out so you can't actually run youtube on here uh, you can probably get around that by running it through the browser. I'm sure you can actually now that I think about that. Uh, there is a web browser. It's not great, but it's not horrible either. It's usable. I actually used it to search for APKs online, download them directly to the device, and then uh, install them. So it's serviceable. Uh, it'll get you by in a pinch. Seeing as this is Android, I, the first thing I thought is, oh, great, I can like customize this with live wallpapers. You can't do that either because I'm pretty sure there's some task or some function that's missing that's part of Google Play services. So I was able to sideload the Google Play services app itself. And while that installs, it doesn't seem to work still. <laughs> so no matter what I did, and I, I spent like a week trying to get Google Play up on this and or and or at least get the services running so that I can install things that required it and I was just never able to get it to work. But every other thing that I've tried, I've tried you know, my own file browsers and everything, that all works perfect. So 
Uh, as long as it's something that does not specifically require Google Play to be installed and fully working, it'll work on this. Uh, I was even able to get my own, um, I use Audios. Um, this is basically like a web radio app. And so long as you're connected to Wi-Fi, this will fire right up. So give it a sec to connect to Wi-Fi here. Okay, so we are connected. So reload, and this should just pop up in a sec. It might look like, there we go. Yeah, so I'm able to use pretty much any web streaming app that I want. So that's really cool. One thing that does uh, stink is the display really doesn't get like super bright. So right now I actually have the brightness on low. And when I said I was able to get uh, three hours of runtime for every 20% of battery life. That was with the brightness all the way down and um, minimal operation of the player. I just set it on shuffle and kind of let it do its thing. But uh, yeah, even on full brightness, the screen looks okay, actually, to be fair. Uh, it looks a little bit dimmer than it looks on screen right now. Uh, the saturation's pretty good. Uh, it's an IPS, so viewing angles are you know, pretty good. It's just the max brightness, especially it's really sunny recently around here. So even with the screen on full brightness, like it was kind of difficult to see the screen sometimes. So, but in general, I prefer over having like a nice flashy screen. I prefer leaving things on shuffle and just turning that the backlight brightness because this thing chews through battery if you leave that brightness on full tilt. And another thing is the CPU on this is an octa-core, so it's actually decently powered, so I haven't tried it yet, but I, I pretty much have no doubt that this will run emulators at least up to like PS1-ish. It should run fine on this, absolutely no problem. Uh, but given the, even with the 20, what was it, 2500 milliamp hour battery, if you're using something that's intensive on the uh, the CPU, like browsing the web and like doing a lot of things, trying to download things over Wi-Fi, it does shoot through the battery pretty darn quick. And uh, you'll notice the CPU must be located down here because this will start getting warm down here. And another thing that I noticed, so while I said wi uh, Bluetooth worked just fine and even Wi-Fi, uh, namely for Bluetooth, but I've noticed while this was in my pocket, uh, the orientation of the player actually mattered. I had to keep the antenna closer to my headphones. Otherwise, uh, occasionally I would get a drop signal, but I, I believe the antenna is like on the bottom here somewhere. So I had to keep the bottom kind of face up in my pocket. So it was slightly closer to the earbuds I was using so that it, the connection wouldn't drop out. When I had it the other way around, it, it didn't instantly drop out. It was very occasional, like every 15 minutes, I would like maybe lose a second or one or both of the buds would drop out because they were true wireless earbuds. So that's just something to, to consider. I have a feeling that maybe the EMI design of like the, the antenna and whatnot might not be optimal. So you're gonna wanna keep this like kind of within maybe 10 feet of whatever device you're connected to and uh, trying to to stream like Bluetooth audio too. Uh, yeah, so I really wanted to get, like I said, live wallpapers to run and I have like a few installed here. I, I love this Pixel Road one and you can kind of look like you're gonna open it and then it just black screens and you're stuck there. You can of course close out of, uh, of that task. And so, yeah, that, that does stink. You can set your own like wall static wallpapers, but apparently live wallpapers requires some Google Play service that is not installed on here that I haven't figured out how to get it installed, thus I can't get that to work. Uh, and like I said, while you can't install YouTube directly, you could install a third-party app like TubeMate, for instance. And I can open this up right now. And this will allow me to watch YouTube videos using this. Uh, and this is actually another thing I've noticed. Sometimes the screen looks like it's flickering, uh, like the backlight. It's more apparent to my eyes than on the screen, but you can actually kind of see on the screen as well a little bit. Uh, but yeah, TubeMate will allow you to both uh, watch like streaming YouTube videos as well as download it. So here I downloaded my own trailer and just turn the audio up. And so these are the, the speakers on the bottom. So 
So yeah, let's uh, just turn up the brightness just to see what this looks like. Now, one thing I found interesting, even though you can watch YouTube videos using this third-party app, I believe because the resolution of the LCD is only 854 by 480, uh, this actually locks you, when it goes to download it, it will lock it to lower resolution. So I can't download anything higher than uh, the resolution of the screen. So that's sort of annoying. So this video itself is only, you know, 854 by 480 resolution. But yeah, if you're willing to settle for not HD video, because anyway, the, the display can't render any resolution higher than, uh, you know, WVGA, then yeah, you can technically watch YouTube videos. Okay, fine. I really wouldn't actually use this for watching videos or whatnot. I have other devices that are plenty capable and just a much better experience on that. Uh, I actually have not tested the FM radio and you do need a, um, like a headphone jack or something in Arial to actually use it. So give me one second to actually test that out. Okay, so I just have a patch cord here. I just want to see. And I did use this actually in my car uh, with the, the auxiliary input jack, and that works just fine as well, and it sounds decent enough. I was actually listening to audiobooks while I was driving. And uh, one thing I found really weird, though, is the jack does not insert all the way. It sticks out, and that's by design. You cannot push it further in without damaging anything. So the jacks must not be, like, the full length which is really weird. So I guess it was like designed to be mounted further back into the case or something. I don't know, but that's as deep as far as it'll go. So that's sort of an aesthetic little weird thing. So yeah, let's open up uh, the radio. Obviously you're not going to hear anything because I don't have anything plugged into here. And even if I did, uh, you, I wouldn't be able to really play it because of uh, copyright. You can see it actually does have RDS uh, information. So that's really cool. So let's just see... Yeah, so I am able to pick up uh, some stations here. Let's see, how would I actually scan? There we go. So now it's doing a scan. Uh, radio reception is okay around where I live. So it should be able to find, yeah, there you go. Found 27 stations, so. <laughs> so yeah, um, can click 104.5. I usually listen to that. I'll, I'll star that. And there you go. It, it actually works really quick. Um, is able to pick up the RDS tag information and uh, start up and whatnot. So yeah, the radio seems to work pretty well there. Uh, I can actually switch it, luckily, to speaker, which I actually might regret. Uh, let's turn down the audio just a little bit, see if it'll work. Okay, it's a commercial bit. So no copyrights. Yeah, so the radio works actually pretty good. Pretty happy with that. I'm just going to... Yeah, as soon as you unplug it, it complains about... Because it uses the cord as the antenna. But yeah, that's actually a really neat extra. So you can use this for... This is great for audio in general. But yeah, I, I wouldn't bother with any of the uh, the video kind of stuff. Or I know you can like look at pictures on this. Yeah, the web browser, for instance, I could just load this up. You could see I was trying to download the Play Store APK here. I could just go to a site like uh, hackaday.com. Let's see. Let's see how fast it'll load. So you can see here, I do have like maybe half um, reception for Wi-Fi, like two bars out of four or something. So it's not the fastest, and the CPU probably... Uh, isn't really optimized for this kind of stuff. But yeah, it is loading. It took like about, so far it's been like maybe 15 seconds. And the pictures haven't quite come up yet. So yeah, there we go. So it's getting there. So yeah, that's okay. Uh, like I said, this is really good for music stuff. I wouldn't actually bother using it for like any of the web capability beyond streaming music. And uh, we even have like Pandora pr was pre-installed. The only things I really installed was uh, TubeMate, this file manager app, Audios, and uh, some of this stuff here, uh, which ended up not working anyway. Yeah, and it does come with a bunch of other apps here, like for podcasts, uh, like Kobo Books, iHeartRadio, Kindle, Tidal, TikTok, etc., etc., even Amazon for some odd reason. <laughs> 
in general, do I think this is worth like the roughly $80 asking price? I'm not sure if there is a sale or will be a sale on this, uh, but assuming that I paid 80 bucks for this, do I think it's worth it? For me personally, no, because I have other Android devices that are much higher end. My Samsung Galaxy S Ultra 20 or whatever, S20 Ultra that I'm filming on right now is while it is significantly larger than this and has much larger battery life and much better screen, pretty much better in every other way, and has a camera, which this guy has no camera, but even if it did, I'm glad they didn't shove a camera in here because that, that would have just pointlessly increased the price while giving a subpar camera. So I think instead of messing with like all the video stuff, they should just ignore all that and just market this as an audio device because that's literally I think what this is optimized for and just anything extra you can install yourself whatever um, there really wasn't a need I think to install all these apps in this sort of bloatware and luckily you can actually uninstall things you can actually go into app info if you didn't want it and uninstall it but yeah anyway I've rambled on for kind of a long time uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video I will have all details available um, if you're interested in picking one of these up for yourself, uh, I would actually suggest this model over the last Android MP3 player that I reviewed, unless if you specifically want the smaller player. Uh, if you're okay with having a slightly larger player, I believe this gives you a lot more capability with being able to install your own apps on here, as well as the fact that it has better battery life, uh, better screen, uh, it's just better all around in general. Plus, uh, I forgot to mention SD card integration. I have a 32 gig card in here. Works great. Perfect. Absolutely no issues. <laughs> so I'm happy with that. And I'm absolutely sure they, they said that this guy can take up to a one terabyte SD card. I do not have one to test with, but I'm absolutely sure I'm confident that this would have absolutely no problem using a one terabyte card if you have like a lot of flax or something. I know. Anyway, yeah, uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.